Polly M. Do you believe you have a soul? Do you think we are spiritual beings having a human experience? Oh, man. <laughs> okay, I have been up and down, back and forth on this question for a very long time. And I have said for many years that I have spiritual hopes, not beliefs. That's pretty much still the case. As I have learned more and more about human psychology, about religion, organized religion, um, and of course, neurology, and, uh, <laughs> and other things, I find it more and more difficult to let myself believe that there is some non-material existence. Now, that being said, the more I find out about the universe and the more I find out how little we actually understand about it, the more I wonder, how could there not be more? Or what is it about existence, about, you know, this universe and us and, and our and life itself? Is there something, you know, that we don't know yet, that we haven't figured out yet, that, that our models are, you know, are not uh, useful for? And I have actually wondered whether we're even capable of understanding life at, a, at, at its most fundamental level. We have all these models, we have all these ideas of what we can understand based on how we experience life. But we're finding... And if you watch my podcast on, neuro on neuroscience this week, you'll see an example of what I'm talking about here. We are finding that the way we think, the way the brain operates, for example, is completely counterintuitive to how we experience thought. So what we think is happening isn't really what's happening. We just have this sort of simulated experience of what's happening. And that's not a necessarily a bad thing. It's just that it, it's very important to understand that because then you look at life and you look at what we're, how we experience life differently. And you go, huh, all right. So what else is there that is, so, that is counterintuitive, right? And are we even capable with this am amazing organ that we have in here, are we even capable of modeling what a spiritual existence even is? I mean, you know, if you really get down to it, like, what, what, what does that mean? I mean, in Scientology, you have a Thetan. A Thetan is supposed to be something that exists, and yet it's nothing. It has no physical existence of any kind. It does not actually exist in the real world. And if you're going to talk about spirit, spirits or spiritual existence, well, are you talking about, you know, multidimensional? Are you talking about, some, you know, something from another dimension? And what does that actually mean? At a, at a root physical level, does that mean it's operating at a different vibration? And what does that mean? Or does it mean it's from some other realm that's beyond the physical realm? And what, what are the rules of that? You know, because there's conjecture about that in terms of other universes that might exist, other dimensions, as we say, that might exist, and how would they exist? So, you know, so there's all kinds of conjecture and questions and, and wonderings going on, and they are fascinating, they are wonderful, they are really, really interesting, but are they true? Jesus, man, who knows? <laughs> you know? Um, so, given the vastness of the question and the vastness of the universe and the tininess of us and the relative insignificance of us in the big, wide world, big, wide universe... Even the insignificance of each of us as an individual, when looked, when you know, when you go to the macro view, or the meta view, or whatever you want to call it, um, what's so special about us? Why, why, why should we be spiritual entities that have this special, unique value to us? You know, I don't know. So it's so it depends on you know so framing and 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 how you look at the universe and and breaking it all down in 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 the different uh, disciplines that we've adopted here on Earth and you know I mean you just you just see lots and lots of different ways of looking at this question and this is how I look at stuff and it's probably a little nuts because I bounce around from here to there and everywhere right thinking about this stuff. Um, and I just have to end up with, you know, do you believe you have a soul? No, I don't. 
do I believe that there is something, that there is some character or or uh, characteristics or something about life that we don't understand? Absolutely. Yes, definitely. Do I leave the option open that we might have a soul? Yeah, I do. So that's kind of where I'm at on it. It's a great big I don't know, but it's an I don't know with all these flourishes on it because there's all this vast potential of knowledge that's just waiting to be discovered. And we need people to get into STEM in a really, really big way and get these answers to these questions because religion isn't going to provide these answers in any kind of ultimate provable sense. And they never will. Religion isn't about science or the scientific method or even, you know, accurate reflections of reality. Religion is about faith and belief and, you know, what could be. And it's about feeling good and it's about community and it's about a number of things. It's about answering questions, you know, for people so that they feel better. You know, it's uh, that that's what religion is about. Science is about actually finding things out that we don't know right now. And I think that as we learn more through science, the potentials of religion will either be invalidated and shown to not be true or they will be shown to have some merits, have something to it. One of those two things is going to happen. Most atheists seem absolutely positive that the more we learn about science, the more we learn about the physical world around us and how it operates, that religion is going to become negligible, not important, not essential, not needed. I don't know that that's true at all. I think that's itself a bit of a hyper-partisan <laughs> point of view. You know, it's determining the conclusion before the journey has been concluded. How do you know where the, on any of this is going? None of us do. So I, you know, so I find that assumption to be a bit off, actually. And um, I try to keep, you know, in my more lucid moments <laughs> when I'm not on Twitter, you know, I hate tweeting on somebody. Um, I try to keep a more open mind and I try to, and this, this question in particular is one that has definitely, you know, I got a lot of attention on this and I, and I definitely would, would, would love to see some kind of breakthroughs or some kind of like, you know, new understandings or new way of framing how we understand the universe so that this question becomes one, a bit more understandable, two, a bit more relevant, and three, we actually get an answer to it. Quite honestly, I don't think that's going to happen in my lifetime. Um, but I do think that the journey itself of the discovery of this will be a fascinating and non-boring one. And that's what I'm along for the ride on. So there you go.